When living in a big city, you pay big bucks for every single square foot that's inside your home. So in today's video, I'm going to be redesigning a guest room in a subscriber's London flat into the perfect multifunctional office, gym, bedroom, and cinema. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I use SketchUp and Photoshop to create a design that squeezes every single drop of potential out of this little 10 square meter room. Firstly, I have to thank Yusuf and Cameron for sending this in. This ground floor flat is their first home and despite settling into the other rooms, this was the room that left them stumped as it needs to do a lot of different things with very little space. As it's the spare room, it needs to function as both an office, gym and guest bedroom whilst also housing the home's boiler. And like many flats in London, this room has no windows with just two roof lights providing natural light from the sky above. So as the least favorable room in the home, it looks like it's been demoted to housing all of the things and activities that you don't typically want on show. As always, to get things started, I had to input all of the measurements from Yusuf's sketch into SketchUp and extrude out the walls and features from the room, like the chimney breast and the two roof lights. Using the dimensions and the photos, I could fairly accurately assume that the room has a 711 door, and using SketchUp's 3D warehouse, I could find approximate models for most of the existing furniture. Despite a lot of the clutter in the room needing a proper home, Yusuf and Cameron already have some great space-saving furniture, such as an IKEA Flecker daybed, which I think is one of the most affordable and effective strategies for getting more use out of a bedroom. They also have a fancy Peloton exercise bike, which actually looks really smart, as well as a decent looking desk setup that has a wide standing desk and ergonomic office chair, which is accompanied by a laptop powered dual monitor setup. This room also houses their suitcases as well as a set of Alex drawers and an old electric heater. So the challenge was in figuring out how I could transform this room into one that you'd actually enjoy spending time in, not only for overnight guests, but also for regular office work and exercise. The best thing about having a SketchUp model of the space is that you can move everything out of the room and accurately shuffle things around to find the best layout without the risk of breaking your furniture or your back. Immediately after doing this, it helped me realize that the daybed and desk fit perfectly along the length of the room, whilst providing enough space between the bed and the door for it to fully extend. This also meant that I could place the exercise bike behind the desk as well, which ensured that there was enough room for the office chair to comfortably move around. This layout left a gap between the bed and the wall, which actually served as a perfect place for storage, with the recess providing enough space for infrequently used items like the electric heater and suitcases. And by doing this, it opens up the room so that it feels much more spacious, whilst providing a usable space in front of the door for things like stretching, bodyweight exercises, and yoga. Seeing as cyclists often ride shoulder to shoulder, the exercise bike mat seems to take up a lot of space for what's actually required for cycling, so I figured that the bike could be placed on rubber or felt pads or simply a cut down mat or carpet runner in order to still protect the floor beneath it, whilst also helping the room feel a bit less like a gym. And finally, the IKEA Alex drawers could be placed just in front of the bike in order to remain in close proximity to the desk. And then I gave the daybed a proper daybed mat mattress cover, as well as some decorative cushions. And then I finally added in the room's radiator so that the space was as accurate as possible before I started making the big changes. The first thing to address was the boiler that looks like it was being covered with a makeshift bedsheet curtain as the previous owner had never got around to putting in a proper cupboard door. This could easily be constructed by any half decent handyman by simply attaching a timber frame around the opening and cutting a plywood door to size that's attached to the frame using cupboard hinges, which could then be painted to match the adjacent wall so that it blends in to completely disguise the boiler. Then the recess behind the daybed serves as the perfect location for shelving. And as this already seemed like the perfect storage location, I figured that this could affordably become somewhat of a cupboard by hiding it behind a thick floor to ceiling curtain on a proper ceiling track, which would not only serve as a cost effective screen, but also a soundproofing and a way to soften the hard aesthetic of the space without making the room feel smaller as it still maintains an illusion of the space beyond it. 
As this room has very little natural daylight and needs to occupy so many things, I figured that a large mirror might help to bounce light around the room, whilst also making the space feel less narrow. So the large blank wall opposite the desk was a great location for a popular IKEA mirror hack using their LOTS mirrors, combined with 25 by 10 millimeter black painted strip wood, which I reconfigured and resized until it felt like the right size for the room. When painting a room to make it feel as big as possible, you typically paint it white. However, despite this being my usual choice, it didn't feel quite right in this circumstance, as the room had so little natural daylight to begin with. So I decided to choose a dark sage green, which is not only on trend, but it also contributes to a lack of color that you can usually find outside of a window. And also because it's a darker paint, it also leans into this cave-like aesthetic, which was a quirk of the room that I really wanted to run with rather than fight against. Then, so this colour scheme didn't feel overwhelming, I decided to do only two of the walls as somewhat of a feature, whilst painting the other two dark grey, which then complements the grey from the rougher texture of the curtain. And after spending some time in the model, I still realised that the lack of nature in the room would really be benefited by a plant of some kind, as a lack of nature is really what makes a windowless room feel so unpleasant, so I placed a plant under the skylight in place of the Alex drawers. At this point I was quite happy with the design and I could just stop there, but I knew that lighting was going to have a dramatic impact on this dark room, as the previous fixture that was in the room had quite an unpleasant effect, as I find that single bare bulbs in the middle of a windowless room tends to give off that interrogation room vibe. To solve this, I figured that I'd utilise off-centred origami lanterns using long braided cables and ceiling hooks to place a large and nicely diffused light source in the corner of the room, creating a soft light that is much closer to that of a floor lamp without the inconvenience of a stand. As low level lighting plays an important role in a room's ambience, I ran an LED light strip along the underside of the desk so that the light in the room isn't only coming from a single light source. Then for task lighting above the desk, I figured that one monitor could be used to mount a screen bar, whilst the other could be used for a webcam, especially as the room now has a much better looking backdrop to show off in video calls. Then finally, because I'd temporarily relocated the IKEA Alex drawers in front of the daybed because of the plant, I wasn't really happy with its location as it would need to move every time the daybed is pulled out for guests. So I had the idea of mounting it onto low profile rubber casters so that it can be easily wheeled around the room. And as the sofa perfectly faces a blank wall whilst having the shelving behind it, it made it the perfect spot for a projector setup for movie nights as a projector could simply be hidden on the shelves behind the curtain and projected towards the wall in front of it. Which is something that you guys will know that I love to do in small spaces. I then finally started a photo match of one of the original images and started creating the main views for the final renders, which I could then import into Photoshop to bring together the final images. Straight out of SketchUp's V-Ray plugin, the software does an amazing job of making the space look pretty realistic, but it's safe to say that the images still need some work. For the final touches, I exported two exposures of the images, as well as the render ID to help with object masking when making changes. So I changed out the white ceramic finish on the planter out for a concrete one in order to add in an additional natural looking material to the space. And I did this by masking out the planter along with its reflection and by overlaying a concrete texture which was set to the multiply blend mode. I also didn't create a proper texture for the painted timber floor, so I used the render ID to quickly mask it out and then I overlaid a timber board texture and set it to multiply to create the shadows in the joints. However, this wasn't enough on its own as it still needed highlights, so I then duplicated the same image and inverted it so that it created a highlight next to the shadow when the texture's blend mode was set to screen. Then I masked out patches of this texture using the brush tool so that it looked a bit more randomised and natural like a real painted floor, which which avoids the image looking unnaturally perfect. 
Then finally, after making some exposure adjustments and fixing some blemishes, I decided to tackle the origami lighting in the next image. Seeing as the virtual light source in the model provided a nice glow to the corner of the room, I dropped in two origami lanterns that I found from a store called Origamic. These looked pretty unconvincing when simply dropped in as they're not on in the images, so I adjusted their orientation and shadows and added an outer glow so that they appeared to be switched on. Then when I was happy with their placement, I could draw in the braided cables that would be hooked to the ceiling and adjusted their shading to match the direction of the light source. Then finally, I repeated these techniques one more time on the photo matched image and the final concept was finished. I'm absolutely thrilled with how this concept turned out, as really just simply tweaking a room's layout can take it to a whole other level. However, it was really fun to work with colour and lean into this cosy and cave-like theme, as I find that good design is often a result of working with constraints rather than trying to bend and force them to your will. And simply by making affordable but careful additions like mirrors and fabrics can really do so much to level up your space without having to break the bank. You can get me to design your space like this too, completely for free, by filling out the questionnaire that I've left down in the video description, which is something that I can only do with your support. So if you like this video, it would be a massive help to share it with a friend and drop a like and comment down in the section below, so I can continue making videos like this one. I really want to make this channel about bringing design ideas to those who may not necessarily be able to splurge on an architect or an interior designer, and hopefully I'll be able to inspire you guys for your own homes along the way too. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.